द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह न्यूयॉर्क विच इसलिए न्यूयॉर्क सिटी काउंसिल की इलेक्शन चल रही हैं ट्वेंटी सैकेंड जून में प्राइमरीज है अर्ली वोटिंग ऑलरेडी शुरू हो गई है असी जिमें पहले भी थोड़े तो सामने डिफरेंट कैंडीडेट्स में लैके आए हैं तो रूबरू कराते हैं अज जो कैंडीडेट साढ़े नाल है वह है रूबेन वेल्स रूबेन यू आर वेरी वेलकम टू द शो Uh, yes thank you very much Ruben thanks for uh taking out the time to speak with us you know mm-hmm. uh, at this uh, fag uh, end of the campaign we can understand yes. how busy you are right now yes. you know i must uh, tell our viewers ki jede ruben and o uh, is district which nave ni hage ruben district 28 which city council laste ladren inane pehle vi is jede city council di seat hai is nu hold kita hai or ek uh, it's an amazing story it's an amazing story of comeback yeah. it's an uh, you know amazing story of fighting back ruben sanu hold details dasange ruben before we go into the details of you know all this false victimization and mm. your comeback mm. uh, you know i would like you to tell us something about yourself you know to our viewers g- g- tell us something about your uh, background Okay so uh uh as uh, Arjo said I am Ruben Wills and I am the former council member for district 28 I was raised born and raised in South Jamaica Queens um have lived in Jamaica Queens and St Albans Queens my entire life um was honored and privileged to be elected to the city council in 2010 and served until 2017 Uh, my district encompasses Richmond Hill, South Ozone Park, mm-hmm. Jamaica, Rochdale, Baisley, South Jamaica houses. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have a huge Indian community in yes. those areas, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, Ruben, uh, uh, I, I would like you to share your story. We we ha- in the story we have seen this victimization. Mm-hmm. We see a criminal conviction mm-hmm. for which you go to jail, right? And then which is uh, you know t- uh, turned over right right, right. we uh, see uh, you being accused of uh, uh, drug abuse and yeah. then we learn that that test yes. was faulty yes can you tell us uh, those details please you know i think you're the very first person that brought up the second portion of the story mm-hmm. i really appreciate that uh, so um in 2017 i was uh tried and convicted uh by now disgraced attorney general Eric Schneiderman. Uh they put me on trial for accusations of me taking money from a not for profit that I ran in campaign finance which I was convicted from 2 to 6 years in prison. Now I was ripped robbed from my community and ripped from my family for 2 years. I went up state. I did not go to a federal club uh penitentiary that people see in the movies and you have tennis courts and I went to some of the roughest state prisons in New York state. Sing Sing, Marcy, Downstate, Wallkill. Mm-hmm. Um the whole time being innocent, mind you, right? Um come back home uh when I was incarcerated because of the neglect of medical care that they gave me and operations that I had prior to being incarcerated I wasn't handled the correct way and I was put in a wheelchair for 8 months hmm. I could not walk had no hopes of being able to walk New York state denied me medical attention as did New York city corrections mm-hmm. um it was through the uh benevolence if you would believe of other inmates where they actually brought me into the gym and helped me gave me physical therapy and helped me work out um because you know when you go up stage you get fit guys lift weights so they understood it mm-hmm. and they allowed they helped me and I worked out um came home on a work release program mm-hmm. a program that is a privileged program few people get started to unite again with my family and once that happened I was then reincarcerated and sent back up state for an additional 6 months for a false drug charge. Mm-hmm. Now what they said was is that I used I had drugs in my system when they gave us a urinalysis. Mm-hmm. I fought it, appealed it, was released in August of 2019 and in September, October, November of 2019, we found out that every machine in the entire system and this entire New York state doc system was faulty. 
Mm -hmm. So I had been telling the truth the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. But people tend not to believe lightning striking in the same place. People tend to believe that, hey, you were convicted, you said you were innocent, and then you were convicted again for something, you're innocent again, who's going to believe that? Mm -hmm. But it came out to be true. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's a class action lawsuit um, against the, and Docs has admitted this, that the machines were no good. Docs is the Department of Corrections. And now they are suing Microgenics, mm -hmm. the manufacturer of the machines, um, because they knew that the, fo the machines were faulty when they gave it in. Um, the lawsuit that we filed, aside of the class action because of my profile, um, Actually, Michael Jennings went to put it under seal because of evidence that we found mm -hmm. to show the things that we're saying is true. Mm -hmm. So that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But I really appreciate you asking about that because people don't quite understand how that could happen. And it, it was true. It did happen twice. No, we, we must tell our viewers that you helped not only just yourself, yes. but, but several other uh, people who were accused of uh, drug abuse because of those faulty uh, tests. And I'm, yes. uh, Ruben, uh, it, it, it seems like an uh, extraordinary story of victimization, hmm. like where uh, you're accused, you're convicted, and then later you get vindicated because right. and that gets overturned. And we understand when you were at the city council, mm -hmm. there were some extraordinary things that you were uh, taking up at that time against the system. Can, will you talk a little about those? Well, um, one of the things that we did and I was super proud of, and I will give credit to who, who should get credit, to Jemani Williams, our public advocate, mm -hmm. and Brad Lander, who is a council member and now running for comptroller. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the ones who actually spearheaded the Community Safety Act, which was the end of unconstitutional stop, question, and frisk in New York City. Mm -hmm. And I was able to fight that, fight with them, and I passed, I was the 34th vote to make sure that Bloomberg could not veto or override our legislative act. Mm -hmm. So that stopped hundreds of thousands of, of young people of color mm -hmm. on the streets being pulled over, um, sometimes with probable cause, but the majority of the times it was racism. Mm -hmm. And that stopped them from doing that because that led these young people to having uh, connections or a direct interaction with the criminal justice system where then they will be victimized because now they may have had a record or something that they they weren't supposed to have right mm -hmm. and then now their job record is messed up and think they lose jobs a lot of people get deported because of things like this which people don't quite understand mm -hmm. so my story doesn't just speak to um, a, a, a one specific demographic. My story is a story of victimization, racial, racial animus, and then victory um, to almost everybody in New York City because there are a lot of people right now, even with the drug story, mm -hmm. a lot of people were facing deportation because of that. You know, they were fighting uh, charges, and then when they had these false drug charges put on them, they couldn't see their families. Mm -hmm. um, their family visits were gone, and some people were getting deported. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Reuben Wells is an extraordinary public servant, mm -hmm. and that, that feeling of uh, you know, the public service, I understand uh, there was some extraordinary uh, things you did when it came to homelessness. Right? Yes, you yes. went and experienced that yourself. Yes. We would like you to share that story with our viewers. So, um, me and my team got together and instead of always fighting and fighting uh, homeless shelters being placed in certain communities, we wanted to understand the reasons for homelessness. Uh, so we decided that I would, in the middle of the winter, take three days and go homeless. Um, in those three days, I went. I had to walk or try to get on the train um, to pump. I had to pump gas to get money to get on the trains. Slept at the Staten Island Ferry. Um, went from food pantry to food pantry just to experience it. I couldn't say that I understood the full experience of being homeless, but during that time, I actually went, had to get admitted into the hospital. And, and when was this? Which year was this? Um, this was, I believe, 20, I want to say 2013, 2014. And uh, you, were, uh, you were serving at the city council? Yes, I was in the city council at that time. 
suffered with a 104 degree fever, caught pneumonia, and had to be placed in the hospital behind it. Asi chaange ki sade viewers is gallu closely samjhan ki as a member of the city council, uh, Ruben Williams ne decide kita he he lived uh, you know as a homeless person for three days, mm -hmm. gas uh, inane gas station the pump kiti. बीमार हो गए इन्हों नमूनिया हो गया मैडिकल ट्रीटमेंट देनी पी बट फस्ट हैंड उस एक्सपीरियंस में समझ वास्ते दैट्स समथिंग यू नो ही डेड आई थिंक दैट इज एक्सट्रॉडनरी एंड यू डिजर्व सम क्रेडिट फॉर दैट इट्स जस्ट बीन अ गुड ह्यूमन राइट वी ऑल हैव बी फेयर टू आवर ब्रदर्स एंड इफ समी हैज मोर दैन आई थिंक दैट वी शुड नॉट जस्ट Except that we have more, but we should do more to make sure that those who have less are fortunate. Yeah, also. And, and, and you know, uh, to be a public servant, uh, to do the right thing, you have to understand the problem. You yes. have to, you know, know how to find uh, yes. solutions to the problem. Yes. But to find solutions, you first have to understand the problem Absolutely. firsthand. Absolutely. Uh, Ruben, we will come back after a short break and ask you what's your plan for your district. To see Vektero the way forward. द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह अज असी गल कर रहे हैं न्यूयॉर्क सिटी काउंसिल डिस्ट्रिक ट्वेंटी एट के कैंडीडेट रूबेन विल्स एन आल सो सो रूबेन वी वर वेरी प्लीज टू लर्न अबाउट योर बैकग्राउंड नाउ कैन यू टेल एस वॉट डू यू थिंक आर द टॉप इशूज फेसिंग द डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन दिस इलेक्शन इन एक्वरी सिंपल इज दैट We have uh, inequity that has been uh, pushed upon the district because of what I believe is uh, systemic racism because of the residents of our district. Mm -hmm. um, our district is made up of largely African American, South Asian, and Caribbean residents. Mm -hmm. um, and there have just been things through policies, legislation, and rules that have made sure that we don't get a fair share of what we're supposed to have, right? Um, so education, there are a lot of inequities in education that as a council member we fought, we made sure that we brought home uh, the highest amount per, in the city period for education just for technology. Hmm. So we wanted to make sure with our classroom without walls initiative where we digitized um, with interconnectivity every school in the district so that a kid in Richmond Hill could jump on uh, uh, the screen with the smart boards that we provided with a child in uh, August Martin High School, right? And what would happen is they would be able to see each other, do incredible things, uh, talent shows, debates. Um, then from there, it became an electronic passport where our kids can actually be part of virtual safaris. Um, they can pipe into uh, children from another culture, another mm -hmm. country, so mm -hmm. that they can say, hey, the guy next to me is from here. You're from Guyana, you're from Trinidad, you're from India, you're from whatever, whatever you're from. We're now communicating with people from that country in real time, mm -hmm. so it's like an electronic passport. Yeah. Then we would actually be able to close the digital divide, making sure our kids understood the technology and they had the technology to move forward, but at the same time we can appreciate and celebrate each other's cultures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because we all live together, we're all interconnected, and we all suffer from the same inequity. We all suffer from uh, lack of transportation, mm -hmm. public transportation, food deserts, uh, school system, infrastructure, uh, just, just it, it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So I think the largest challenge to my district and districts like mine is inequity in almost everything that we look at on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruben, if, if I ask you, you know, uh, lots of our viewers uh, mm -hmm. uh, are involved in the taxi business. Taxi, yes. And they have had um, a, a rough deal in, mm -hmm. in the past some time right. uh, because of, uh, you, know, you, mm -hmm. you, you know, the issues. You please tell me, we have uh, heard of the driver plan. Yes. What is what is the driver plan? What do you want plan to do for this community? The dri oh well, my driver plan is several phases, um, mm -hmm. and one of them is the New York Taxi Workers Alliance plan for debt relief, and that's for individual medallion owners. Mm -hmm. um, as you've seen in the last few years, we've had a high incidence of suicides, mm -hmm. um, and that's because the city has done harm to the medallion taxi cab industry, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when I was in the city council, I fought against Mayor Bloomberg's plan to put more medallions for sale on the market that have ever been done before, mm -hmm. which saturated it 
and diluted the value of the medallion. Mm -hmm. So where there were people who were hardworking, put all their investment into a medallion, and the medallions might have been worth a few hundred thousand dollars and they were able to use them for a mortgage on a home, right? The American dream, use it to secure their children's education. Mm -hmm. Now they were worth almost nothing. Yeah. That's, that's direct harm. The city is responsible for that. So I have endorsed that plan and I will work with that plan to make sure we deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, the Taxi Commission. Mm -hmm. Nine-member commission, as you know, you're yeah. you're 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 an accomplished attorney. So uh, you're you're a voice and an advocate. What I would do is um, that nine-member commission is set up between the mayor and the speaker of the city council, which means he had to answer to the body. Mm -hmm. Five people from one from each borough is supposed to be on that. Mm -hmm. What I would do is make sure that someone from Richmond Hill or South Ozone Park, a leading organizer, a driver, would have representation as a commissioner on that board. Mm -hmm. And then we would set up a round table. Mm -hmm. We would get uh, advocates throughout the community, and we would have, or throughout the, the Queensboro, because the other elected officials would go along with it. Mm -hmm. We would have a round table. I think we would set it up now where it would be every two months for the first six months, and then after that we would do it every three months, every quarter. Mm -hmm. um, and we would do it simultaneously with um, English and whatever are the majority requested languages in translation. Mm -hmm. And then we would put forth a fan moving forward um, to make sure that we all benefited from it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a major issue concerning the community. Yes. And I'm sure your previous experience uh, with, with the city council will come in handy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, you have a lot of uh, uh, Indians, particularly Punjabi community yes. uh, in, in your district. Mm -hmm. have, have you been able to reach out to that community? Yes. Um, I've, always had a, I've always enjoyed a great relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of leaders that are with us in the community. Um, and we're going to move that forward. Those relationships were interrupted when um, I was wrongly convicted mm -hmm. um, for those two years. And as soon as I came back and when they heard I was home, even though I was not reaching out, they were reaching out to me. Mm -hmm. um, the community has always stood with us and we've always stood with the community. Um, after 9-11, we stood with the community. Um, and more recently in 2012 and 2014, when we had attacks on persons from that community, we stood there and said we wouldn't tolerate it. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna tolerate any person in my community community being attacked at all. I don't care if they're Punjabi, I don't care if they're uh, if they speak English, I don't care if they speak Spanish, I don't whatever I don't care where you're from or what you speak, we're all united in one cause and that is to way forward, right? The way forward and with our, our community make sure we're safe. Uh, sure. Uh, Ruben, uh, to, to be specific, yes. Wh wh what do you think uh, are the major concerns or what are your major plans for this particular uh, community? You know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the issues, uh, you know, this, uh, the community still uh, feels left out. You know, the community yeah. does not have a, you know, a decent uh, community center for uh, elders, right. things like that. What do you think are the issues which particularly concern the Punjabi community? I wanted to do an intergenerational um, community center. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be uh, best suited in the Richmond Hill section of our district. Mm -hmm. um, not just because that's where the, ma the majority of the population would be, Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park, but I believe it because you want to place it where the older participants of that center who would enjoy the services, it's easier for them to get to, right? Mm -hmm. And then we wanted to do that and combine that, this is where the intergenerational comes in. We want to combine that with the schools. Mm -hmm. So when they go to schools, because now you'll be going to schools for 3K, mm -hmm. right? Before it was just 4K. Mm -hmm. So you're in school for daycare, and when we get subsidized daycare, 3K, 4K, we want to make sure that when the elders are in the senior centers, we can have something where they can all enjoy each other. Not just on the weekdays, but on the weekends also. They should be able to come and enjoy their culture. They should be able to come enjoy each other in anything they want. Dance, music, faith, anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to know the prices for it? You want to uh, like an actual breakdown of finances? We have we've done the research on these things. Sure, <laughs> and, and, and we'll do a special episode of that. Okay, great. Uh, you know, uh, if if I ask you, if I ask you to uh, list three goals mm -hmm. that you uh, plan to achieve if you're elected, mm -hmm. what would be those three goals? To make sure first uh, there is a district cut, so that 
Uh, and when I say district cut, I mean that we have new boundaries set because of the census. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 51 council members now. Mm -hmm. And I was just explaining maybe an hour ago that I believe in Queens, especially because I was the council member that presided over the last uh, district. Um, there's a uh, scale, and on that scale there's a, a deviation of 5 to 7 percent of the population allowed. Mm -hmm. So it's something like 160,000 and we're something like 170 something thousand, but we know we're closer to 240,000. Mm -hmm. So there's no way in the last 10 years that the population at the rate it was growing then and it, it exploded in 2015, there's no way that we don't have enough now to cut a separate district. Mm -hmm. And I think that that district should be cut so that this population can have its own representation because that is important. Mm -hmm. It is important for anybody who is young to come up and see someone who looks just like them holding a seat. Seeing Reuben Wills is cool, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to make sure that fairness is for everyone. Mm -hmm. But seeing someone who looks like you, practices your faith, speaks the language that you speak, has the b cultural background that you speak is important because it lets me know that I can do anything. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that a separate district is cut. I made that promise, and if I'm reelected, I will make sure that that happens. Um, second thing that we want to do in that district, aside from the community center, because I believe that this community center should be done in three parts of the district. Mm -hmm. But setting specifically for that district, as I believe that uh, uh, some of the parks should be um, made to represent more of the activities from th those communities, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know if you heard of a sport called cricket. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that would be facetious, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we made sure that we had a couple of cricket fields already. Sure. But I think that Smoky Oval Field mm -hmm. can be made into an incredible portion of it can be made into an incredible cricket field, mm -hmm. and that we should have sports in the schools, which is a bill that I passed to make sure that those types of sports are supported in the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, economic development for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, we should have not just loans, but we should have grants that are targeted for specific business owners because those small business owners are our economic engine. Mm -hmm. If you go up and down Liberty Avenue, it would be a perfect, or one of first Avenue, right? Perfect examples of that in my community. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more, so much more of a robust community that we can have explode if we, pres we, we provided grants um, so that they would be able to do what they needed to do and become small business owners. Do, do, do you have uh, anything particular in mind uh, in light of the the way COVID has hit small businesses? Yes. Um, so we are we are everybody knows about PPP. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows about the small business grants. Mm -hmm. But what people don't realize is there are programs that we can take advantage of as a community. Um, there was a program, I believe it was the EB5 program, yeah. and that was when people overseas can come and get visas, mm -hmm. and they would pay five hundred thousand dollars into a business. Yeah. Most of the time, it was into a hotel. It just had to be a business that created, I believe, 10 jobs. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. uh, 10 jobs. And then they would be granted a visa, and then they would be paid back. Um, it didn't have to be high interest. But that money, now, uh, President Tr Donald Trump, when he was in, changed it. Mm -hmm. But that money can still be brought in and be used um, to help businesses that were suffering from COVID. Mm -hmm. um, not just help them... Uh, with the business part, but can help them the same way we want to do a 10 cents, it ties into each other, a 10 cent surcharge on app calls for taxis and, and, and app based um, calls mm -hmm. for a, a health and benefits fund. Mm -hmm. We can use that money to do the same thing for mm -hmm. businesses that suffered from COVID. People who actually got sick, they should have that fund also. Uh, Ruben, we are running out of time. Okay. You know, <laughs> there's one more uh, goal to be listed. We've yes. talked about two. I would ask you to quickly tell us about that goal and then then I would like uh, to hear in your words, what is it that differentiates you from all other candidates uh, in this race? Why should we pick Ruben Wells? You said there's one more goal? You said uh, I asked three goals that we have discussed two, I, I believe. No, I spoke about uh, the centers and the schools. Mm -hmm. I spoke about the economic development. Mm -hmm. And I did speak about something else. Oh, well, okay. I got five, six, seven, so it's not a problem. Okay, uh, so with, right. with, the, with the limited time we have, <laughs> okay. let's go to the question. Okay. What differentiates Rupert Wills from the rest of the candidates? Uh, number one, experience, hmm. right? Yes. Um, I've served for seven and a half years in the city council. Uh, no one else who is saying that um, can say that they served for that amount of time. And 
it's not just about serving, but we were particularly and specifically um, successful with uniting our communities. Um, so you won't find me trying to make one community feel like they're more important than the other community because we're all together. Mm -hmm. um, integrity. Uh, I not only said I was innocent mm -hmm. when I was indicted on the courthouse steps, I fought for my innocence the entire time when I was incarcerated and I was proven innocent afterwards mm -hmm. because where some people are just reading that I got a reversal, you know it, but many of the other people might not know that it was fully dismissed by the state Supreme Court judge and she said that I should be restored back to my good standing in the community as if there was no arrest, indictment, or prosecution. Mm -hmm. The only thing that she couldn't restore me back to was elected office. The people would have to do that and I think that that separates me from anyone else because I have the real life experiences. Uh, homelessness. I have the real life experiences of this um, wrongful incarceration. I have the real life experience of being a small business owner mm -hmm. and making sure that I knew what it was to get up at five o'clock in the morning and pay payroll tax and make sure that I paid the people in my who worked for me and my employee before I took payment myself. Mm -hmm. Being a family man, being a man of faith, I have all of these things, um, thank God, that distinguishes me as a package from anyone else running in this race. A Sansade candidate Ruben Wells. Ruben Wells the bade deep roots hai community which to see Sare in anu Jandeo uh in an epale survey kita in anu experience haga besides jede kafi experiences jede in an at say har kissamde but he closely a uh, community no samajdin uh I hope to see in the circle closely Sunni Hunia in the Jedi uh, conviction segi usnu overturn kita gaya pele in upper kuch ilzam lagaye gaye drugs nu related jo in an approve kita ki o test he faulty siga hon I think it would be time when the community will come forward and you'll stand vindicated. Yes, uh, I, 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 I really appreciate it. I mean, so many calls came through. So many people prayed and sent me cards. Um, so when I was vindicated, it was the culmination of all of that. Ruben, thank you very much for taking all the time thank you. speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. To see Vegdero, the way forward.